let's just sew whatever. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are making the uh, Zaneda backpack from Oro Rosa Patterns. This backpack is super cute. I had such a blast making it. It has these two outer pockets here, two front slip pockets. This one has a magnetic snap and an optional flap you could add like a flip lock to or something. Um, it's got adjustable backpack straps and inside has a slip pocket and a zippered pocket. This bag does um, have binding as the finishing piece. So you do see the inside is made that way. Um, it's not like a drop in lining or anything like that, but it could be made that way. I just don't do it in this video. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. It's super cute. It's actually a really great size on your back. I would say it's kind of like a medium size backpack. I wouldn't say it's like a mini backpack at all or something too large. You can see there the straps are pretty long, easily adjustable. So you could wear it even lower if need be. I hope you guys have fun making this bag because I know I did. I'm pre-gaming with peanut butter monster trail mix. It's literally just candy with some raisins and peanuts, but it's delicious. Okay, so I've got everything cut and interfaced here for the Zaneda backpack. I am using printed vinyl. Um, regular vinyl and then waterproof canvas to line the bag. So I'm just gonna kind of go through and organize my pieces. I have two main panels cut out of vinyl that I have interfaced with a um, medium woven interfacing. This is the SoFuse Plus from Castine Handcrafted. I hope I'm saying that correctly. And it fused really quickly to vinyl. I was super surprised, so I'm excited to try that got my lining pieces. I've got a lining slip pocket that I cut to 6 inches by 12 inches and I'm just going to attach that across one of the lining panels. I've got waterproof canvas binding that I cut 1 inches wide by I believe 48 inches long so we'll use that later to bind the bag. I've got my gusset that I also interfaced with that same Sew Fuse Plus. And then my two zipper panels. These are not interfaced. I've got a zipper pocket for my lining. I've got my side pocket pieces that are interfaced with nothing. <laughs> and I've cut waterproof canvas out to match. Okay, and then I've got my main slip pocket. I've interfaced where that snap is going to go. And then the second front slip pocket, I am not doing the front flap. Um, so yeah, that's all those pieces. Um, as far as hardware goes, I have two one inch wide mouth slide adjusters. These are on my website. The vinyl I'm using isn't super thick, so I don't think that's necessary, but I went ahead and did it anyway. Um, I just need two square rings, two one inch rectangle rings one magnetic snap and I believe that's it um, and I went ahead and made a tassel out of the printed vinyl just because why not um, this is a smooth printed vinyl that we're going to have available on my website June 1st so May 1st is textured vinyl and then we're going to do a smoother vinyl um, and I believe this one is a little more domestic machine friendly so I'm excited about that um, but let's just go ahead and jump right into making our straps I've got four full bobbins and yeah, let's just dive in. Um, I've got my backpack straps. These are cut to 40 inches long, four inches wide. I'm gonna add double-sided tape down the center. I am using, if I can find it. Hello, I feel like it's been so long since I've filmed. Also, I'm wearing shorts. I'm not pantsless, in case that was an issue. Um, I'm just going to use this half-inch wide double-sided tape down the center. Sorry. Ben came downstairs. Anyway, so yeah, just straight down the center. 
I get my double-sided tape from waywack.com. Um, I do find it doesn't gum up my machine, but some people have had issues with it, so just keep that in mind. And I'm just gonna add this down the center of all of the strap pieces. The vinyls that I'm using, um, the black and the holographic are from Bodio. Um, and she just has like odd lots that she sells. But look how fun that is. Oh, I love it. So I thought this vinyl would be good for like little accents on the bag, not necessarily the entire thing, because that's just gonna be a lot. Um, if you guys are looking for um, a tutorial that's more close to the pattern instructions as far as like zipper pockets, etc., I think Saya Swag has done a video. I haven't watched it, so I don't know how close she is to the original instructions, but like um, Alexis does her zipper pockets a little bit differently, things like that. Um, so you're always welcome to follow the way I do it, which I call the lazy method, or you could increase those skills and I'm just resisting it oh okay so folding in the long raw edges to the center You just want to give it a nice press so that it sticks down to the tape. There are some vinyls that don't stick as easily and they tend to try to lift up. That's kind of annoying, but make do. Um, so you could add another piece of double-sided tape down the center if you wanted so that when you fold it over, you don't have to worry about clips or anything misaligning. Um, but I'm just going to leave it at that. Repeat on this side. I'm really excited to make this bag. I have made, I think three or four of the Erica Bowler bags and I have another one that I've cut out that I'm really excited to sew. Um, and I just, I really love the shape of Alexis's patterns. They're, they're so unique and so like easily attainable. You know what, like it looks fancy and it is fancy, but it's not that hard, you know? that's my work ethic right there <laughs> all right so I'm just going to use a stitch length of five and go down each side of the strap and I'm just folding it over as I go I'm just going to set this aside for now and repeat that on this other strap. All right, so those I've set aside for now, and then I'm going to go ahead and work on the main straps for the bag. Now for these, she has this really fun method of attaching them that is just so unique to her patterns. And I really, really love that um, 
and I'm sure I've said this a million times, like they have a voice. They have a similar style throughout. And I just think that's really cool that she has like a signature spin on all her patterns. She is Beyonce, always. Okay, so what you're gonna do is sew down closer to the center of the strap versus the edge. So normally your top stitch like an eighth of an inch away from the edge, now you're gonna do like three eighths of an inch. But what I'm just gonna do is follow the outer edge of my sewing machine foot all the way down. And you really want this to look nice. So I'm gonna go nice and slow. I'll go ahead and do one strap with you guys on camera talking it out and then I'm gonna just speed through the other one so I'm gonna fold this in half just to find my center crease I'm gonna grab my ruler and a marking pencil and we're gonna measure five inches out from each edge so a 10 inch line total five inches in the center and we're gonna add some top stitching to the handle there. And then we'll attach it to the bag. So I've got two lines marked there. And she has a method so you don't see like where you backstitch or anything like that. Go for it if you want. It's not something that I think I would look for or notice. So it's not something that's important to me to take the extra time on, but again, lazy girl method. Here. Okay. And then she has you like tie it off and slip your threads back in. Mm. All right. And now what I'm gonna do is pick which side I like best of my strap. Mm, I like this one. So I'm gonna put double-sided tape on the side of the strap I don't like best. And I'm just gonna put it down the center so that it will stay in place. And then we're gonna attach it to our main panel. Okay. So I'm starting with my front panel first, just in case I mess up or something. I can, I can fix it. You won't see it, I should say. So I'm gonna fold my main panel in half and I'm gonna make a little snip at the top, a little snip at the bottom. And I'm going to measure two inches from either side. And that's where we're going to start our handle. So you're going to line it up right with the bottom. And then I'm just pressing it up against my ruler to know how close in I am. Ooh, she fancy. All right, and then we're going to measure 10 inches up. And that's where we're going to sew it down onto the bag. So I'm just making a little mark at the top for the 10 inch line. 
And I am somewhat sleep deprived, so if any of this is wrong, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. All right. So there is that and then we can add rivets here and here if we wanted to um, but I'm just going to set this aside for now and then work on the back panel. All right, so now we're going to work on the bottom strap connectors. So I'm gonna grab double-sided tape. You could also interface this piece um, with like a piece of waterproof canvas or Dr. light or any medium weight interfacing. I have faith in this vinyl. I'm just going to fold the long raw edges in towards the center. Um, if you're using a woven fabric for this, I would definitely interface it just so it doesn't stretch out over time. Each side. slide your rectangle ring through center I'll repeat that on the other side and then I'm going to sew kind of how she has the straps on the front I'm just going to sew down the center to help hold it together You can see there's my two stitches and then there's to hold it together so that this doesn't get loose and wobble around or anything like that. And it might even stay to do something similar to that in the pattern and I missed it, but. Trim all my extra threads. Okay, and then using the markings on the pattern piece, we we'll go ahead and place your hardware and straps into place. Um, and make sure you are kind of adding them at an angle. Um, the Lin Sport mini backpack really brought that to my attention, at least, that like the way a backpack sits is at like an angle on your shoulder. So it makes sense that you would, you know, place it that way. And I want my hardware to kind of go off into the seam allowance a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and base this in place now and then I'll add my other one. Um, unlike a bag, 
that you would just sew the lining and the exterior and then put them together. Um, this bag is made with binding, so it's a little bit different. So you can't have too much within the seam allowance, um, otherwise it's going to get in the way of adding the binding. So just keep that in mind. And then just make sure you're mimicking that same angle on the other side of the backpack. And then I'm going to baste these pieces at the bottom. And then it's totally up to you if you want to um, like add your slide adjusters at this point, but I'm just going to kind of roll up these handles. I think it's probably best to wait to add those, but I'm just gonna clip them into place here. Just for now, so there's our back panel. There we go. It's not going to go many places. <laughs> um, so now we can go ahead and get started on the front panel. So I've got my front slip pocket and my front lower slip pocket. So for the front slip pocket, I'm going to make sure that right sides are together. I'm going to sew across that top edge. Then I'm going to trim the excess fabric away to save myself time when I'm cutting out the bag. I just kind of roughly cut out my waterproof canvas lining because I know I'm going to trim it all down anyway. So that's my little tip. So we're going to add our magnetic snap. I'm going to add the female snap to this pocket on the exterior front. Um, this pattern calls for like a flip lock, but you could also just use a magnetic snap. And I have interfaced that with the medium weight fusible interfacing. Okay. And then I'm going to flip this out. And if you want to, you can use a little bit of steam along the waterproof canvas, but if you're using vinyl for this part, I just wouldn't risk it. You could also heat up your ironing board and try it that way. Um, but I'm just gonna roll the seam back and forth in between my fingers. Like that. And then sew along the top and then base stitch around the outer edges. And I guess if you don't want to right now, you don't have to base stitch because you're gonna add the lower slip pocket to this as well. But if you wanna just make sure that nothing moves, couldn't hurt. So there's that. And then we're gonna add the um, snap to this side as well, but I need to sew this first just because I didn't cut it very straight, so it's hard to know 
where to place the magnetic snap, but we can do that in a second. bag would look really cool with one of those half moon um, magnetic snaps but I think um, I believe it's fireweed stitches or bags by cat I can't remember they might be the same thing um, I believe that they sell them that down and now we can mark where we need to attach the um, magnetic snap so there's one placement if you're gonna use the flap and then there's a placement if you're not using the flap so just make sure to take note of that and then we will add it So then what's nice is you can just clip that into place or snap it into place I should say and then I'll use my clips around the outside edge to line everything up. And baste it all together or you can add it to the front of your bag and then baste it all at once. So there's that panel. Here is the front of my bag. And we can just line up all those raw edges. And I'm just going to baste all the way around. add a nameplate right now. I do have a video all about nameplates. If you just search my name and metal nameplates or all about nameplates, you should find it. And that'll give you more information if you are interested in ordering your own. I just measured a couple inches down from the top. Mark out my little slits. Um, if you are ordering nameplates, make sure that you also ask for washers. Otherwise, they're not going to stay on your bag very well. I've 
had that issue with my first batch. I didn't know to ask, but. So there is that so far. So we've got our front panel finished, our back panel finished. Um, we can work on our lining pieces. Um, we're just gonna add a slip pocket and a zippered pocket. Um, and then our zipper panel. We're getting, we're getting there guys. We are getting there. Let me go ahead and grab my lining pieces. I've got two main pieces, a zipper pocket, etc. So let's go ahead and start with the slip pocket really quick. I'm just going to fold over the top edge about an eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch, and top stitch. Almost out of bobbin thread. I can hear it. And then I'm going to grab a piece of quarter inch wide to set across the bottom and fold up. Um, another way you could do it if you wanted is to lay it this way, top stitch it in place, and then fold up. Eh. It's definitely something I've done in the past and it, it works, but this is just kind of quicker, I think. And then I'm gonna fold these in half to find my center. And while I'm here, I'm just gonna go ahead and make a little snip in those centers because we might need them later. I'm gonna lay my slip pocket into place and sew it down. And then if you want to add dividing lines or anything like that, you can at this time. I'm just going to go ahead and trim off the excess zipper or slip pocket. So there's that. And I'll set this aside for now. We're going to eventually baste it to our exterior main panels. on the zipper pocket. So I've got a piece of zipper tape here with a little zipper pull. Those are available on my website. However, they are super limited edition um, and won't be restocked. So if you need some, make sure you grab some. I'm just going to go ahead and add a seven inch zippered pocket. So I'm marking on the wrong side of my zipper pocket piece. This is not how it's done in the pattern. It's just how I'm doing it. Marking my center, both sides, and then I'm going to lay those center pieces right sides together, and sew two parallel lines. Of my box. some micro snips to cut this open down the center snip out to the corners and make sure you're not cutting through the thread or your stitches you're just snipping right next to them and I'm going to pull this through and then I'm going to press it with my iron using um, a gentle amount of steam. Especially with waterproof canvas or you'll melt it. Alright, 
so that's all ready to go. So we can sew the zipper pocket in. You can use double-sided tape to help you fold that in place if you want. Just gonna go for it. I like my zipper tape to be longer than the zipper opening by quite a bit so that I can leave my zipper pull off out in the middle of nowhere to do whatever it wants. Should have changed my bobbin. Let's say a small prayer that I don't run out. <laughs> Thread. So I'm pulling those little corners through just in case. There we go. Just so they look nicer. Make sure you straighten your zipper out. And pivot. Again, just kind of pull those little triangles. Now, depending on the size of your zipper pull, you want to leave quite a bit of an opening. I think this one will fit, um, but you just pull it through the opening before you close the off that side. Bobbin is still going strong. And then if this were a bag that we were birthing through the turn hole or anything like that, we'd want to leave the bottom open, but this one uses binding, so we can just close it off. best place to kind of run out of bobbin so not bad okay 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 and then just in case I'm gonna sew down that bottom again and that's only because my needle could have perforated through the waterproof canvas and it might eventually tear. So I've got two lines of stitching just in case. And so there is our zippered pocket. So we can again grab our exteriors, lay them all together. You could use a little bit of spray basting if you wanted to help hold them. I'm just gonna clip and I'm lining up those center snips just to be safe. <laughs> and then before I sew it all together, I just had images of me putting it on totally backwards. Okay, so wrong sides are together, right sides are out. So there's my slip pocket. I like to have my slip pocket on the front of the bag and the zipper pocket on the back. You, you do what you want out. I don't know why. uneven you can kind of trim it down at this point it's like my lining is a little bit longer down here no big deal okay I was like where's my other handle this is just the one side And then this is my side with a zippered pocket. We'll line up those center snips, wrong sides together. 
Make sure everything is kind of sitting nicely. Straighten out all your hardware and then baste. situating this top strap because I don't think it was perfectly aligned and like before I sew it on twice so there is my center snip one inch out there we go Now we just have our gusset to work on and then I mean we're moving right along here. I haven't even checked the instructions in a while so hope I'm doing this right. <laughs> no I, I'm pretty sure. All right so go ahead and grab our side pockets. The side pockets are so cute. This seems like such a large bag in the photos of it but I don't I'm just, I'm so excited to see it. I've been wanting to make one since I did the pattern chat and talked about it. I think I, I remember being like, I wish I had time. I don't have the time, but I'm making it anyway. All right, so right sides are together. And you're gonna sew along the top and the bottom, but not the sides, at three eighths of an inch seam allowance. flip them. This would be kind of fun to do with a clear vinyl too and just do one layer or use a clear vinyl and a colored waterproof canvas or something. It could be fun. Okay, so you're going to fold it. And if you were using a woven fabric, you could kind of iron this flat, but since I'm using vinyl, again, I'm just kind of massaging that seam back and forth. Repeating on the other side. And then we're going to top stitch along the top edge, but not along the bottom. Waterproof canvas is just a little bit bigger, so I'm going to trim it down so it's all the same at this time. And then we'll grab our gusset piece, only the exterior. And an inch. 
inch and a quarter from the top of each side is where we're going to line up that top edge. And we're going to sew the bottom into place. I'm going to add two lines of stitching along the bottom just because why not? Inch and a quarter. Line up that top edge. So there is the gusset bottom piece. I'm just gonna loop back around. I'm just gonna do two rows of stitching. Just in case. to baste these in place, lining up that side edge. So they kind of jut out at an angle, like the Annette if you've ever made that, or like the Beetlebug mini backpack. So we've got our gusset ready, and we just need to work on that zipper panel, and then putting that whole gusset together. And guys, we're getting so close! We're doing such a great job. Thanks for sewing with me today. I'm just checking my hardware bin to make sure that I've used everything I'm supposed to so far, because you never know. my zipper ready to go. It's cut a little longer than I need it to be. I'm just going to use a little bit of heat along the edges to keep it from fraying. And then it can't hurt to add a little clip to the end so our zipper pulls don't come off. I did add two zipper pulls and I'm just going to lay the zipper face down on my exterior fabric. You can use tape or glue to help hold this in place. Or clips and baste, whatever. Um, I know Nicole from Sonar uses a lot of Fabri-Tac to hold her zippers. Love that. And I was doing it for a while, but it's just an extra step that I'm not used to. So I don't, I don't do it really. Right, so we've got the zipper basted on to our exterior main panel and then I'm going to grab one of my lining panels and line them up. 
I cut my waterproof canvas wider than I need it to be. Again, I can trim it down after. So if that's annoying to you, go ahead and cut them all the same size you need them. You do you. This just is super quick for me. All right, so then I'm gonna use my quarter inch seam allowance or so. So all of that together. And I'm gonna very gently use my iron to press that down, avoiding my vinyl. Okay, so then I can press this and top stitch along the edge. that down. It's so fun. All right, and then we just repeat that on the other side. So I'm going to start with my exterior panel and make sure you line it up with your other exterior panel. So it's all nice and straight. And if you feel comfortable, you can go ahead and add your other piece, your lining piece at the same time, and then you save that basting time. Um, but basting helps prevent any wonky um, zipper issues that you might have. So keep that in mind. I think I need a new needle. I've got some thread shredding. I'll do that in a bit. We'll see if it keeps happening. Could have just been a bad spot in the thread too. So far so good. Okay, and then I'm gonna press this open, avoiding any vinyl, using a lot of steam. Flipping that through. And then make sure that you pull your zipper pulls in on the bag and I'm going to just baste around so that they don't come off. Mm, I've done that wrong, I think. No, 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 I have not. Okay. I'm just so used to making like the Deedlebug mini backpack and stuff that I'm like, wait, this doesn't seem right. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to lay our zipper panel face down. On the exterior. So exterior sides together and then lining sides together. And we're gonna top stitch. All right, so we're gonna sew all of that together at a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And 
and then repeat on the other side, right sides together. And right sides of your gusset lining together. My zipper gusset is a little bit wider than my um, gusset of the bag in general, and I think that's just due to seam allowances of my zipper. I was putting that together, so it shouldn't be too hard to kind of fix. And we're just going to fold all of this together and top stitch. And then I'll trim my zipper panel to match the gusset of the bag. And your pockets should be facing up. If they're not, you've done something very wrong. That is what that is looking like. Um, and then really quick, I'm gonna baste all around this panel so that everything stays in place. There we go. And just clip. And then repeat that on the other side. any excess you can trim that down now Ooh, my chair is so creaky you definitely want to trim down all those extra little threads together so I can find my centers. Make little snips at the top and the bottom. And 
Because it's, uh, it's getting time to put it all together now. hair clips away. They're not going to help me now. Need the big guys. And I'll grab um, the back main panel first. Luckily the zipper panel is even on both sides so there really is no set front or back of that. That makes it a little bit easier. And just fold down your handle. I'm going to clip it to the other pieces there and start with your center clips, center snips, add some center clips. <laughs> um, I could see foam being added to this gusset to help give it some more shape, but we'll see. It might not need it especially with all the vinyl and waterproof canvas. It probably won't need it, but just kind of thinking out loud. And then I'm just going to add a few clips at a time and then kind of work the main panel into the edges. I'm going to add some tiny little snips within the seam allowance along those side curves to help get it into place. And luckily, like if your gusset, you accidentally messed up the seam allowances and it's a little too small for your bag, you can trim your exterior panels down a little bit. Um, overall, your bag is going to be smaller, of course, but it's not like you need to re-sew or re-cut anything. You can kind of fix it that way. Just an idea. So far, everything is looking pretty good over here. Um, you can use staples to help you hold everything in place. She mentioned that in the pattern. Um, I'm feeling pretty good about these clips. So there is everything together. I'll go ahead and switch up the camera angle for you guys. Okay. So I'm going to start at a nice flat section over here. And you want to make sure that you're sewing a little further in from your basting stitch so you don't see that. If you're not a fan of binding, this bag can absolutely be made um, like a regular method of making the bag. Um, but using the waterproof canvas for the binding is actually really easy. I have been loving it, as you know. <laughs> Okay. 
So I'm going to go ahead and trim down my seam allowance now. You can see all this excess vinyl um, isn't going to help when we add the binding. So I'm just trimming them so that they're the same size. And then before I go ahead and add the other side, I'm just gonna go ahead and just kind of double check that the exterior is looking good. And I'm gonna go ahead and add the binding now. I don't see the point in finishing it all and then adding the binding when this works just as well. So the same method as the Linsport backpack, you kind of thin down the edges of waterproof canvas and start it off clipping around. You can fold it in half first if you want, but this should cover all of the stitching. You don't need to cut it on the bias. It doesn't really have much stretch, um, but it's not really an issue. You just kind of pinch it into place along those curves. Um, if you have a domestic, this might be a little too thick. Not 100% sure, but this pattern is written with a different form of binding, so you could just follow that. See if that works for you. I know people have asked if I would do tutorials on domestic machines, and I have a few, but um, I started learning bags several years ago on a domestic and hated every second of it, which is why I have an industrial now. I can't go back there can't make me go back there. Okay. So you want to make sure that you've cut plenty of extra binding. Once we get back to where we started, you can trim that off. So that's pretty close. And then I just take the little snips and trim down the excess. So when we fold it over, it's not too bulky. Okay, there we go. So then we'll attach that. And again, I'm just starting at a nice straight side. And you want to keep a consistent seam allowance to what you originally sewed. You don't want to come in too, too far. And then I'm kind of using this clip to help push it all into place before I remove it.
you want to check on the other side to make sure you've caught everything. And I missed this little corner here. That's okay. I'm just going to fold it back over. Make sure you're using a thread color that matches or all your little mistakes might become very obvious. So there's one side complete. You could kind of turn it out to double check everything if you wanted. Yank on it, make sure everything is nice and sturdy. We're just gonna shove everything back into the bag. I'm gonna unzip a little bit and attach the other side. Um, so far, if you're enjoying this tutorial, be sure to leave a thumbs up on the video. You could even comment down below and let me know how it's going as you're sewing. Um, I've gotten a lot of comments of people saying that they miss my tutorials and stuff, so make sure you click that bell icon so that you're notified every time I upload a new video, which I hate saying. It feels very annoying, and it's like, do what you want. I don't care, but still. definitely easily make this bag wider if you needed to. I'm not sure that you would need to, but just in case. Um, because the pattern, it's not really a pattern piece given, it's just measurements. You could just add an inch to the measurements. clipping around the bag now. This is the front of it, so it's really important that everything looks nice. I want to make sure that it lines up. Issue. Okay. I'm just having a little bit of trouble with this corner here. So I'll probably start sewing down here just so I make sure to catch all that. Okay. Oh, change the camera angle.
So there's that attached. And then I'm going to trim down that seam allowance before we add our binding. So you can see in these corners here, there's a lot of extra exterior fabric. And our binding won't sit nicely if that's poking out. And then we can go ahead and add that binding. I'll just go ahead and speed through this side because you've already seen it. If you're putting binding on, you must clip it. Okay moment of truth. I feel like this bag might be not my best, but I tried. So go ahead and foam definitely would be too much. I always forget how much extra the binding really adds to the bag. Especially when it's waterproof canvas, it's kind of like a boning almost. It's really stiff. That's what she said. Alright, I'm do undoing all of these clips really quick. Let's pull all these straps out. It's a little bit easier to see. I know I messed up my side pocket somehow when I was attaching the gusset when I was attaching them to the gusset, I should say. So that wasn't great. They're washing vegetables upstairs. Pressing along all the seams. Make sure everything sits nicely. You can just kind of roll it like so. Of course, once there's stuff inside the bag, it's going to sit differently. not a small bag necessarily but it's really cute <laughs> look at that so cute you can barely tell where I messed up on the pockets there's like a little I think my seam allowances were just a little bit off that's okay and there's the back so all that's left to do is attach our adjustable strap hardware So you've got your strap facing up. You're gonna slide through the bar of the slide adjuster. And then with that facing up, you're gonna come underneath through the square ring and then back 
through this slide adjuster underneath where you've already attached it. And then you can add a rivet or you can sew it in place, but that's how that gets attached. So make sure everything's face up. You can see your slide adjuster on the top. And then come back underneath that square ring and underneath the strap that you've already slid through. that's that's that um, so something I might do I meant to rivet them onto the bag before I got started but I didn't but you can rivet through your lining as well I may just leave it though because if you hang it up or you're wearing it it's pretty cute or you could sew um, like a little piece that has like a little snap on it that holds the handles together. That could be really cute as well. Um, but I really, really enjoyed making this pattern. There's this front pocket here. This whole front piece is a pocket as well. It's got two side pockets. You could add your keys or a phone into. I wouldn't say that it fits a water bottle necessarily. And then we added a slip pocket and a zippered pocket to the inside of the bag. Super cute. And I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I'm going to just sew this up really quick off camera. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for joining me and I hope you enjoy making this bag.